All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Heather Deer, and I'm the Assistant Director of Parent and Family Programs. Welcome to the last webinar in our Parent and Family Programs webinar series this spring semester. We're excited to be talking about what is next with the Cohen Career Center. And we have some fabulous representatives from the Cohen Career Center, Lisa Randolph and Don Snyder, who are going to be able to walk you through some of those what's next questions, resources, and options available to your student, and how you can support them through that process. So if you have any questions, please do use the Q&A feature here in Zoom to ask those, and we will have a Q&A section at the end of this presentation. But at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lisa and Don. Thank you again for being here with us. Thank you, Heather. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and we'll get our PowerPoint started. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking the time for this session. Uh, as Heather had uh, introduced us, I'll just do a quick introduction again. My name is Don Snyder. I'm an associate director in the Cohen Career Center, and I have a, a, an industry advising role for STEM careers. And I'm Lisa Randolph. I'm an assistant director um, for experiential learning. So I, we're all generalists in our office, which we're going to talk a little bit about, but um, specifically I focus on internships and externships. So obviously we've been living in, in COVID for a year plus, and so we're, we're getting used to this COVID climate. It's not a nice climate, but we're kind of getting used to it. So, but as, as far as perspective, uh, working with students and the internship, the job search, um, it really has, has forced all of us, uh, especially students to even be more creative in their thinking and in their, in their approach with standing out. Um, getting noticed, getting recognized, getting on the radar. Um, so, uh, you know, we as advisors have, have realized that and, and, you know, these are some of the strategies that we always employ with students, but we know that really um, with, this, with this environment, they really have to be even more proactive and even more creative and, and thinking uh, outside of the box. So this is the career development cycle and students may be at any, your student may be at any point in the cycle and they may not go through it consecutively. They may go back to different parts. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea of what those parts are, assessing self, exploring options, developing skills, marketing self and performing. And Don and I throughout the presentation tonight are really gonna talk about each of these in ways that if your student is in that that space, um, how they can move forward this summer. So we want students, of course, to make informed career decisions. And so to do that, they really need to be thinking about their VIPs, their values, their interests, their personality, and their skills. All of those components are going to go into considering what they might want to do. Um, and, and they'll want to reflect on their VIPs as they're in different experiential learning opportunities as well. One of the tools we use to help students with this is called Focus 2. Um, it's an online career assessment, um, self-paced, and it, it looks at all of those components. Um, so students have access to this at any point. The, there's a um, password right on our website, and so they can do that. We do encourage them if they do um, utilize Focus 2 to make a follow-up appointment with us, just because sometimes it can help to kind of talk through your results. Um, sometimes they might seem too narrow, sometimes they might seem too broad, but after a conversation, um, usually we can help them to, you know, use that as a starting point for the conversation of looking at potential options for them. Other ways to explore career paths. Um, so we subscribe to a resource called What Can I Do With This Major? As we're gonna talk about tonight, there's not just one thing you can do with any major. Um, and so this kind of helps students look more holistically at what are areas that they might work in, who might employ people in those areas. And that can be really good if your student knows what they wanna major in, but they don't have any idea what they want to do with that, that can be a good place to get some ideas of where they might head. Um, another one is Candid Careers, which is another 
um, thing we subscribe to for students. And it is brief. I think they're mostly one to three minute um, informational interviews. So just hearing about what different people do. And if you search for a career title in there, then it'll give you related titles. So students can kind of work through that to learn and kind of broaden um, what, what they might do if they have sort of a general direction. Another thing we always encourage is informational interviews, which is students asking, we often encourage to start with alumni because William and Mary people wanna help William and Mary people, uh, but to just learn about what was their, what's their career path been like? What do they do in their current role? So um, one option to use is the alumni feature on LinkedIn, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later other people in their network. So connections of connections, whether that be your friends, their parents or their friends' parents. Um, people usually have access to a lot more, um, a, a lot broader of a network than they realize. So we just try to help them really explore that a little bit. So um, we really encourage uh, students uh, to network um, first and foremost, uh, to develop those connections, those relationships, and to be aware of their particular uh, industry, uh, industry area of interest. Um, so every uh, industry area has a professional association. So we've just given you four examples here, um, zoos and aquariums, nonprofits, Women in GIS, American Marketing Association, every uh, career area has a professional association. And uh, a lot of these professional associations have websites, they have networking events. Now we're in COVID, so a lot of these are virtual events, virtual conferences. Um, and we encourage students to take a look at these professional associations and assess perhaps they want to join an association um, if, it's, if it's worth joining. But if they do decide to make that uh, investment, it is much cheaper to join a professional association as a student. Um, student rates are much lower. Uh, and so again, they can get connected to these associations and they can um, be involved in, in conferences, virtual conferences, meetups, uh, just to be in the know of what's happening out there in their career field, um, be surrounded by other uh, people that are, are interested in that career field. Uh, so professional associations. Really important to uh, take an inventory of skills that your student has and skills that your student needs to continue to develop. Uh, again, this is part of, as Lisa mentioned, that, that self-assessment phase. Um, you know, as, as students are, are, are looking for opportunities, whether they're internships or full-time positions, uh, they need to get a real good feel for um, their, their portfolio of skills. Do they have the skills necessary? Um, are they looking at postings, positions that are, you know, kind of repeating some of the skills uh, and training that is necessary? Uh, and do they have these skills and trainings? If not, how can they get them? How can they develop, further develop those, those skills and abilities? And so again, it's taking an inventory of yourself and part of that inventory is skills what's out there, what's needed, and what are the opportunities to further develop my skills. So we belong to uh, a national association that connects college career centers and employers. It's called NACE, as you see at the bottom of the screen, their National Association of Colleges and Employers. And NACE has done a lot of benchmarking, a lot of surveys of employers, and they ask the question, to employers, what are you looking for as students graduate from college? What skills, what qualities, what attributes are you looking from students as they graduate from college? Uh, and this is uh, a result of, of, again, a lot of questions asked, a lot of feedback from employers, and it doesn't matter the type of uh, position, type of industry. These are overarching qualities that employers are looking for. So as you see the eight there, and actually NACE just today came out with a, uh, a revision, an update of these, uh, of these competencies, the NACE career competencies as, as they're called. So again, as your student is taking that self-assessment on the qualities, the skills that they have, and 
putting themselves in the shoes of the employer. What, what is the employer looking for? They can make that assessment of, okay, I need to develop a little bit more, um, you know, business acumen here. I need to be develop a little bit more awareness here. I need to develop those, those experiences in this area. So again, it's so important for, for you and your student to have that uh, employer perspective. There are a lot of, uh, again, I think COVID has really amplified the opportunity for online learning. Um, there are a lot of platforms out there where students can uh, further de develop their skill sets. Um, you know, Lisa and I and the other advisors are meeting more and more with students, having these conversations. Okay, uh, perhaps you, know, you didn't get an internship or what are you gonna do over winter break? Or you're looking at these jobs that require GIS, Python, you know, whatever the programming skill, what other other technical skill, and you feel that maybe you're lacking in that skill. What are ways you can further develop those skills? And so we see a, an offering here, whether it's Coursera, edX, LinkedIn Learning, there's, there's so many platforms out there where students can take classes, and in a lot of cases, take some ba basic classes for free. Now, there is a, a, a fee that will come into to play if a student wants to maybe continue on in a series of courses and, and get a certificate in that particular skill set. Um, so again, you gotta assess, is, is the investment worth it? But at the very least, students can get some introductory courses and foundational courses for free in a lot of these platforms. Now, LinkedIn Learning, William & Mary has a subscription to LinkedIn Learning. And so that is a free service uh, from being a William & Mary student. You, know, you can um, log into LinkedIn Learning. And again, like a lot of these other platforms, it has a, a wide library of a class of courses uh, that you can take. And they can get they can access that right through um, SWEM Libraries page is how they access LinkedIn Learning. So it's really important for students to be able to promote themselves. There's a lot of times if your student is a student at William and Mary, they've probably done some pretty great things so far. And I'll be meeting with a student and they'll say, "Well, I just created my own business," and it's like we talk about it, and it's not a just right. It's it's they need to be able to promote what they've done because they've done some really cool things, but unless they're able to share that and convey that to employers and graduate schools, it, it's not gonna come across, it's not gonna impact their future. So we look at personal brand as the convergence of how you see yourself and how others see you. Um, we encourage students to use some of these platforms if they're interested in creating a website or starting a blog. Um, if students are really passionate about what they're doing, they often have a lot to say about it. And these can be great platforms or to um, share a portfolio of their work or things like that. So every semester, um, Wix, which is um, a website creation platform, does a workshop at William & Mary, a virtual one, um, and they give students that attend that a free year of their premium site. Um, so this can be a really great opportunity over the summer for them to start figuring out how are they branding themselves? How are they coming across online? How can they be stronger in doing that? Another great resource is LinkedIn, um, which, I find several different things when I meet with students, either they've heard about LinkedIn, but they don't have LinkedIn, or they heard about LinkedIn and that they were supposed to have one, and so they created one, but they don't really use it. And so if your student has a LinkedIn, I would strongly encourage them to take this opportunity to really just build up their use of that platform, build up their network, um, make sure that they have a really full profile. They can join different groups, um, which is a great way to connect with alumni and other students. Um, and I mentioned earlier about informational interviews. The alumni feature on here is a great way to find people to do those informational interviews with. And somebody had asked in the Q&A um, if we provide resources for informational interviewing. We absolutely do. There's a whole page on our website with 
how might you reach out? Here are some sample questions, as well as we meet with students regularly to have those conversations, um, to talk through with them what's important for you to get out of this and what questions might you ask to do that. And we might even practice with them if they're you know, really apprehensive about the whole process, just kind of role playing a little bit to get them more comfortable with that. They can follow organizations and influencers. We do encourage them to engage in conversation. That might be kind of status updates. That might be um, commenting on discussions in groups. It might be sharing articles. Um, but definitely, if they have LinkedIn, it's really important that they're using that platform. And they can do so much on it, but they do need to really grow it to be able to do that. And, you know, some students will use or some people in general will use different social media channels. We do encourage people. Um, you want a consistent brand across your social media, but to try not to use all the platforms for all the things. So trying not to use every platform for professional purposes, because that would get exhausting. But there are different features within each one that might be useful for them, depending on what industry they want to go into and who they can connect with through those platforms. And I will reiterate, um, students have to be active with LinkedIn. Um, you know, we meet with a lot of students who, like Lisa said, create a LinkedIn and they don't do anything with it. They, LinkedIn is such a powerful tool. There are so many William & Mary alumni on LinkedIn that want to help. But students have to be proactive and they've got to reach out to those alums through LinkedIn. Um, we could not do the capacity of what we do in the Career Center without our alumni network and we use Lisa and I all of the advisors use LinkedIn every day to make those connections with alumni for meetups career panels connecting with students so um, I'm just going to reiterate that that is such an important resource so moving on to uh, some critical elements in the job or internship search and those elements that we can help with um, resume and cover letter um, it's important for, you know, everybody uh, to have a resume at any level, uh, even freshmen, because, you know, as you start exploring career interests and possibilities, reaching out to people, you never know when someone will say, hey, do you have a resume? Send me a resume, an updated resume. So you want to make sure they are up to date and it is a true representation of, of, of the person uh, in an effectively and accurately markets that person. Um, now, you know, freshman software, we know you're not going to have a lot of uh, career relevant experience. That's okay. You know, you're still, you got to start somewhere. So you're developing a variety of experiences, freshman software, um, whether it's in your home community, whether it's on campus, um, virtually, uh, you are developing a variety of experiences and you need to highlight the variety of experiences that you have um, you know, on the resume. And the cover letter is important too. Um, not everyone requires a cover letter, but many uh, types of opportunities require a cover letter, or they may be an option to write a cover letter. Even if it's an option to write a cover letter, we encourage students to add that, uh, that document to their application because it, it gives space to talk more about them as a person and their qualifications and their knowledge about the organization and their interest in the position. So um, the cover letter can, uh, again, give a, an organization more information um, to make an accurate decision. So in a cover letter can be a platform for students to illustrate their effective writing skills. So um, we can definitely help um, we do a lot of resume reviews, cover letter reviews, with a lot of information on our website for the development and the refinement of resumes and cover letters. Another reason for to encourage your student to keep their resume up to date is that it's really hard to go back and remember what you did two years ago. And so if they're continually adding to that document and having a living document, I always encourage students have a master resume. It could be 10 pages of everything you've ever done because you never know when one of those things might become important um, to pull off and you don't want to have to think back and say, oh, what did I do in that experience? 
Another thing that we encourage students to prepare for before they need it is MAC interview or is interviews. So um, MAC interviews are really helpful so that that first interview isn't the one that counts. And so um, we want to help them prepare so they can make appointments for MAC interviews with career advisors. We also subscribe to a platform called Big Interview where they can um, review some interview resources, but also they can record themselves answering interview questions and watch it back. There's an AI feature in there. And so that can be really helpful. Um, I know when I was becoming a new professional that I did, I had that happen. I didn't sign up for it, but I went into what I thought was a resume review and it was a um, mock interview with video and then we watched it back and I know it sounds terrifying but it's honestly super helpful because um, two reasons they can kind of see do they have filler words that they use a lot or do they have distracting mannerisms but the other thing is it gives them confidence because they're probably better at interviewing than they think they are because when people think about interviewing it just don't sound scary and so you know getting that experience in practice and answering questions is really key. And I'll uh, add another point for, for Big Interview. Um, just the format that Big Interview comes in, it's you know a one-way recorded interview. So a student is given a prompt um, from a pre-recorded talking head, basically, but they uh, need to record their answer, basically looking at their, um, their webcam. And this is, this is a good format to practice in one, just to, it's kind of low level commitment and students can, can ease into it. But more and more organizations are using this one-way video format uh, for screening interviews. And so students uh, need to just be comfortable with the technology, with, with the format, with the approach, because more and more organizations are using these one-way video uh, formats. We're going to harp on it a lot. We're going to reinforce it. Uh, we talk about it all the time. Uh, networking, when it comes to job search, internship search, top of the list. We, we like to um, talk about it, but we also like to kind of demystify it as well because um, students can get, you know, it, it's, it's for some students, it, become, it becomes more natural. For other students, it's a little, it's, it's a lot more work. Um, so, we all know we have to do it. Hard part is, is making it a top priority. So um, I try to demystify it when I work with students and, and, and say that, you know, it, it's, it's all about developing relationships, having conversations, reaching out to people, asking for advice, letting them know what you're interested in. Um, there are structured opportunities to network, career fairs, information sessions with employers. There are many unstructured opportunities. Uh, you have an, an opportunity to network every day. Uh, so I think students just have to kind of reframe what networking is and all the different opportunities that they have to network. And so we've got a visual here. Uh, students, start with your inner circle. Start with those closest to you, easiest to reach out to, knowing uh, you know, you've got that connection, family, close friends, and then you work out the, the outer circle family and friends know, uh, professional associates, community groups, neighbors, uh, and then the outer circle people you would like to get to know. And, and I would say, you know, parents, you're a part of that, uh, that network. Um, you know, alumni are part of that network. Uh, so it's just, again, realizing uh, you, the students, uh, are in the center of a lot of rings of people that are there for you that want to help when I say you, the student, talking to your student. So uh, I think students just need to realize that there are a lot of advocates around them, people that want to help, but they just have to, have to identify them and they have to take the step to reach out and ask for help and just let people know what they're interested in. So it's very important for students to get experience. And I think a lot of times people think experience means internships, which it does, but it can also be a whole host of other things. And so we want students to be, as we've talked about already in, in different parts of this, we want them to be thinking outside the box. What are other ways to get experience if they're not able to secure an internship for the summer? 
So really thinking from a broader perspective, um, some options they could look at, offering to do projects for a company, um, look at employers who are specifically open to remote work. They might consider the structure of positions. So looking at temporary work, um, micro internships, which we partner with a platform called Parker Dewey, and they facilitate the posting of these micro internships, which are short-term project-based um, internships. So they might be a couple of days to a month. Um, so if your student hasn't been able to secure an internship for the summer, maybe they could apply to several of these opportunities um, and get a variety of experiences as well as exposure to different companies. And also job shadowing. Um, again, with COVID, that might be harder, but people can sometimes do that virtually. We did, we have a um, externship program over winter break and we had a lot of our hosts do it virtually this year, um, which, you know, people are often open to, especially if the student can come with saying, okay, here's an option, you know, and, and kind of lay it out for them, which again, if your student needs help figuring out what that might look like, happy to meet with them to chat with them about how they might approach that. And I'll add to this um, volunteering, um, you know, taking the step to, to volunteer. I met with a student the other day She's interested in wildlife management and is just trying to expand the portfolio of her, of her experiences. And she's volunteering at uh, one of the, the museums um, in, in her local area. So it's just, again, self-assessment, recognizing the opportunities that are out there. What are the skills in demand? What are the experiences in demand? And how do you get those? And what are the entry points? Um, and, and sometimes it's it's you know taking that step to volunteer, and again documenting on your resume, um, and people see that, you know, people take note of that uh, that you you were willing to to volunteer to, to develop to develop that experience, um, and they they definitely take note of that. So uh, we talked about again the resume and documenting all different types of experiences. I really want to. Um, just, just um, kind of emphasize that any type of seasonal job adds value. And again, this is for, especially freshmen, sophomores, juniors, um, you know, I would say especially freshmen and sophomores. Um, we, we work with students and we talk about experiences on the resume and then they'll talk about a, a food and beverage job or a retail job and they'll kind of brush it aside. They won't really focus too much on it. And um, we, we want them to definitely recognize it. We want them to put it on their resume. We want them to realize that employers like these types of experiences. Now, I know eventually you want to get career-related, relevant experience. That time takes time to build up. But don't brush away these types of opportunities and these types of experiences and how employers look at these experiences. So, Right, the typical, you know, we kind of look back at our own childhood growing up, you know, what types of summer experiences, summer jobs did you have, food and beverage, retail, landscaping. Uh, employers look at these and they see qualities, uh, work ethic, responsibility. Um, they see transferable skills, working within a team, uh, working with people from different backgrounds, working with the general public, problem solving, communication. So, um, you know, as, as, as you're thinking about these with your, with your son or daughter, if they're looking at these types of experiences, know that these are valuable experiences. They build up transferable skills and qualities. You want to document them on your resume. And you never know, especially in positions where you're public facing, meeting with a lot of people, um, representing a lot of career fields, a lot of backgrounds. Um, I've work with, with students who in the past have been in a public facing position. They provide an excellent customer service. They get into a, a conversation. And before you know it, that, that person says, oh, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going, I'm going to, to college. You know, oh, what are you interested in? So you never know where these types of positions uh, you know, may lead. But again, they do develop a nice, solid foundational uh, set of skills and qualities that employers um, value. So Don stole this slide, but this just gives you an idea of some of the platforms where students can find volunteer opportunities. And a lot of those are virtual now too. So if you're 
student isn't comfortable going in person, but they're wanting to build up some experience, um, lots of opportunity for that out there right now. This is to show you about Tribe Careers, which is our um, career management platform. Students just use their William & Mary credentials to log in. They can do a variety of things on there. They can schedule advising appointments. They can sign up for industry newsletters. So um, we have five different industry newsletters, um, which Don's gonna talk about our industry areas at the end, I believe. Uh, they can RSVP for events. They can search for internships and jobs. They can explore employers. And there are still internships and jobs being posted. I know the mindset is I'm too late, but it's not the case. Um, there are still ones being posted there. We encourage students to utilize filters on there and set job alerts to get notified when um, new things come in that are within their filter parameters. And we're happy to meet with students to walk them through kind of how this works as well. Really important for students to, again, be proactive, take those steps. A lot of times, uh, maybe a parent will ask, what's the first step? Or how, how, do, how does my son or daughter get engaged? What, what, again, what's, what's the first step? So a lot of times, just scheduling an individual appointment uh, through Tribe Careers, uh, where again, we're mostly virtual. So meet with a student via Zoom or phone. But a lot of time, it's just, just taking that first step and, and having a conversation and, and getting an idea of where the student is, what they want to do, um, and how to get there. Uh, we definitely are big believers in developing a game plan and you know, providing them that structure um, that they're looking for, strategies, resources, um, and, and, and different, um, different approaches. Um, we have a lot of programs. We do a lot of programs uh, in the Career Center to connect students with employers, with alumni. So whether it's a career fair, whether it's a career panel, whether it's a meetup, there are a lot of programs happening that uh, students can connect with employers and alumni. So um, using Tribe Careers, uh, again, we have so many programs going on that that students, you know, can just go into Tribe Careers and, and kind of get on top of um, what's coming up. So um, we do a lot of crash courses, um, you know, resume development, um, using LinkedIn, job search, uh, you know, how to make the most of your summer, things like that. Most of our crash courses have been converted to video clinics, um, again, in, in response to COVID and, and how do we make more of our services accessible 24 seven. So we've converted most of our crash courses to video clinics, which live in tribe careers on our website. Students can access those 24 seven. And then, um, you know, so we mentioned, we've got actually technically two different websites. So tribe careers is that more of that interactive uh, website where students can look for jobs and internships, RSVP for events, schedule appointments, and then wm.edu slash career. That's our kind of part of the family of department websites that live with William and Mary. Um, and so we have a lot of online resources that live in our department website uh, as well. And one of the questions that was just asked was about if um, 2021 grads can still use our services for a few months. Our services are our full services are available to students up to three years after graduating. Um, and the stuff on our website, that is all accessible to anyone at any point in time. They continue to have access to tribe careers after the three years. <clears throat> and then um, there are also other resources available after three years through, um, his name is Michael Steelman. Um, and he does a lot of programming um, and opportunities for alumni three plus years out. Yeah, and Switchboard is another uh, platform. Uh, once students graduate, they can connect with alumni uh, through the Switchboard, William Mary Switchboard platform. Uh, this is a visual uh, of our uh, career advising staff. Um, as Lisa had mentioned, we are all generalists. We can work with any student from any major, any class level, any background, but we do drill down into specific industry areas. Um, so, 
As you see here, uh, we've got Andrew Martin, who works with students interested in public service, education, human services, careers, Kelly O'Shaughnessy. Early career engagement, so freshmen and sophomores, Kelly develops programs specifically to engage freshmen and sophomores. Kristen McQuillan works with students interested in creative careers. So that could be digital marketing, that could be film, media, communications, anything around the creative careers aspect. Rachel Southern works with students interested in business careers. And so again, a student doesn't have to uh, be a business major uh, to be interested in business careers. And so that's why we have the kind of the career um, liaison model where uh, it's not a doesn't have to be a major specific model. So um, if uh, you know, an econ major or a history major, uh, philosophy major is, takes an interest in business careers, um, well then they can connect with Rachel uh, to, to develop that game plan. And um, as you know, you're, you're um, connecting with us right now with Lisa with experiential learning and me with, uh, with STEM careers. So, the industry advisors, uh, we manage our, uh, our, what we call our career communities. And so again, within our career communities, we develop a lot of programming. Again, a lot of programming with employers, a lot of programming with alumni, and then messaging, and then just resources. Uh, we each have our industry newsletter that gets uh, sent out to students regularly that will contain listings of job and internship postings, um, just different events happening, whether it's um, Career Center specific or William & Mary or beyond William & Mary. And so we do um, gather a lot of information specific to our uh, industry area. Um, students, again, they need to, again, you know, identify and connect with their uh, industry liaison. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want any students to kind of fall through the cracks. And so if a student as a major and they have, you know, an uh, uh, maybe they're not, maybe they're still exploring. And so maybe they start with Kelly and then they, they work through and then they get an, an, an interest in, you know, public policy or, or another area. And then, you know, we can get them shifted to, you know, the right advisor or, you know, the next advisor. So we don't want anybody to fall through the cracks. We're all generalists. We have, we have industry areas but we want your students to take those steps and get connected uh, with us. And a lot of times it's just, you know, scheduling that, that appointment to develop that game plan. And with the newsletters, in addition to the ones that Don mentioned that students sign up for the industry ones, we also have career conversations that goes to every student every Sunday. Um, and then Kelly has uh, Jumpstart, which goes to all freshmen and sophomores once a month. So there's additional um, newsletters as well that are more general in nature. All right, well, thank you for that really thorough presentation. I feel like there were a lot of topics covered, a lot of really great resources that you mentioned. So families, if you have questions, please do please do submit those in the Q&A. We have just a few minutes for some questions and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with a couple that I see here. One of our families asked or mentioned that their son is encountering that COVID seems to have eliminated most internships and he's maybe struggling to find something. He, he's a very good researcher and he could add a lot of value as an intern, but we need help finding things he can apply to. What is some advice there? I would honestly just encourage an individual appointment because that way we can talk to him about what it is that his interests are and then, um, you know, try to connect him with resources that we know of or opportunities that we know of. And we all work really well together too. I know we mentioned we're generalists, like for instance, today I had a very specific appointment about internships um, that fell into Dan's liaison area. And while I knew the general information, I also knew that Dan knows a lot more than I do about specifics. And so I had reached out to him ahead of time. So I was able to share that information with the student. So we really all do work together to try to help students find as many resources as they can. Wonderful. So it's a little hard for freshmen to network during COVID. I think it's a little hard for all of us to network during COVID. We're all having to do it in very different ways. Um, any ideas? I know you mentioned a lot of ways and a lot of 
people and different circles that students can reach out to when they're networking, but any creative ideas in terms of networking remotely? Well, I will, I will just say that, you know, if people are spending more time at home and being virtual, which is actually opened up a little bit more flexibility. They're, they're probably available more um, and, and, and probably more accessible um, for students. Uh, so I think that that has helped. Um, I know for us, um, it's been much easier pulling in alumni for different virtual programs. We can just literally go across the country and, and do an outreach to alumni to, to participate in a program, knowing that they don't have to travel anywhere. They're, they're available there where they are. So I think that same philosophy can work with, with students, knowing that um, you know, alumni maybe have a little bit more time, maybe a little more flexible um, in a virtual environment. Um, so again, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, use LinkedIn as an example. Um, that is a, a platform. It's, it's designed for professional networking. There are a lot of alumni on LinkedIn. They, they expect to be reached out to from students. And I tell you, it's, it's much easier reaching out as a student to a Wimmery alumni. One, knowing that alumni want to help, they reflect back and they were walking in those shoes as, as, as well. Um, but I think it's easier reaching out as a student and asking for advice because you're a student. Um, so uh, Lisa, anything to add on, on that? Yeah, I know Don mentioned in, in one of his slides, you know, thinking about networking as relationship building, which it completely is. But also, I always tell students, you know what, people like talking about themselves. So it makes it a little less intimidating to do that outreach. Another thing is attending our events, because a lot of times we'll have alumni or employers do programming. And at the end, they will share their contact information. And so then much easier to reach out and say, you know, I was at your presentation on such and such a date at William & Mary, I would love to connect and then kind of grow it from there. And again, I think just starting with those inner circles, um, you know, I, I've met with a lot of students over the years and, and seen some, some amazing experiences on their resume. And, you know, it's, it's tapping into their, their inner circles, family, friends, neighbors, um, for some great experiences and it, it's you know it, it, it's it's developing those relationships and it's networking it's, it's nothing you know to you know it, it's just a powerful powerful way and you know uh, I, I think it just goes back to that mindset of identifying your advocates and reaching out to them knowing that they want to help in you know Saying what, what Lisa said, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of alumni that, that um, you know, participate in these panels and these meetups, and they will, they will say, literally, just please, students, reach out to me, you know, so they are definitely willing to help. So I have a couple questions here that are kind of in the same vein. Um, one parent asking if William & Mary has any relationships with federal government entities that hire from William & Mary and another that a senior is applying for a lot of jobs on USA jobs, and if you have any helpful tips for applying for government jobs. Yeah, I would encourage your, um, for the one asking for tips, I would encourage an appointment with Andrew Martin, um, because that is his liaison area, but um, we, he does um, federal resume workshops, um, and different things like that. There also, as far as recruitment, we had um, in the beginning of March, we had, what was it, Don, three days, two days? Two days. Two days um, of, it used to be, or normally, it is a trip to D.C., and they go to four agencies, maybe, three or four agencies, and it's a limited number of students that can go. We had two full days of programming across all industries, um, and it was it was great. Um, but yeah, a lot will send, um, whether it be directly to someone in our office or through tri posting in Tribe Careers, we'll send opportunities. Um, if they send it directly to someone, it gets put into Tribe Careers, but definitely lots of opportunities there. We actually had, um, now I'm not going to remember the name of the, or the agency, but um, 
oh my goodness, it was a national security agency, I can't think, um, but she did a career chat over winter break um, because we did offer that because of the externship program being smaller because not everybody could host virtually or in person. Yeah, we have some good relationships uh, developed with uh, federal agencies. Uh, Andrew's doing a great job in his, uh, again, liaison area, developing those relationships. Um, you know, our, our fall and career, our fall and spring career fairs bring in federal agencies. We also uh, partner with some other schools up in Northern Virginia for a consortium career fair. So a consortium career fairs when a group of schools partner together and uh, we have that again usually in person um, at Georgetown uh, virtual this year but um, that happens up in uh, well virtually but uh, it, it, it focuses in on uh, government nonprofit and education um, employers uh, so that's another touch point uh, for students and then just a, a word of advice with you know navigating USA jobs it is a it is a bear to navigate. Um, it is uh, a, a system that you know is is a lot of moving parts to it. Um, we've had uh, representatives uh, from federal agencies come in and talk about you know how to uh, get through that first screening round. And one of the things that they reiterate is keywords. Keywords speak the language of the posting. Speak the language of the industry. Uh, whether it's a person scanning a resume or, or a machine scanning the resume, they're scanning for keywords and they need to be in there. And when we talk about resumes in general, um, we usually, uh, you know, uh, advise on a one page resume. Uh, federal government, they like a lot of information. Uh, and so um, you have more space to expand. Um, if there's an empty text box on a federal application, fill it in. Even if you feel like you're repeating information, fill it in. So federal government likes a lot of information. Um, even if you feel you're repeating yourself, fill in that text box. So a lot of keywords and a lot of information. Another thing to think about if your student's interested in federal service is virtual federal student service, which is um, they have to apply in July, but it is a program that goes from fall through spring. Um, it is completely virtual. I think it's typically about 10 hours a week, but it's with all different agencies um, and it's project based. So they're working on real work, um, but that's a great way to start getting some experience and some, some networking as well to meet people within those agencies you might be interested in. Yeah, that's a great program and it's been virtual. It was virtual before COVID. So it's been around for a while. So I'm gonna wrap us up with one last question. I do see that we have a few open questions. So part one of this question, Lisa and Don, is if families do have more questions, who can they reach out to? And the second part of the question is, with COVID accelerating new ways of working for employers, what are you seeing in terms of shifts in recruiting, new categories, trends, and, and what students can be looking forward to maybe post COVID? Yeah, so I would say students can reach out directly to us. They can reach out to the general career email um, or any of the industry advisors. So really anyone, all of our contact information is on our website. Um, and as far as trends, I mean, that's something that we really keep on top of with meeting with other employer relations, um, people at different colleges, as well as employers. Um, and that organization that Don mentioned earlier, NACE, does a lot of surveying too to see what's going on. Um, I think a lot of things are happening right now. It, it shifted some recruiting timelines earlier. It shifted some later because people didn't know what they were going to be doing this summer, if they were going to be in person or not. Um, so I think it, it impacted it in a lot of different ways. And I don't even, I wouldn't even say, um, that it's like these industries were impacted in this way. I think it was kind of across the board in different ways. Um, obviously, you know, even we did all of our stuff virtually this year, but, um, most employers had to anyway. So even if we were willing to do it in person, employers couldn't have been able to do that. 
And looking toward fall, I think people are still up in the air, according to the most recent surveys that have been done. Um, I know we're planning to do some stuff in person, but again, it will partially depend on what employers are able to do, if they're able to travel and attend events and things like that. Yeah, I think um, different trends such as the micro internship has really um, elevated in, in awareness. I mean, micro internships have existed before COVID, but um, I think they're really, they really ramped up and employers are just thinking of different ways that they can still cultivate that type of pipeline. Uh, so the micro internship project based short term, not a traditional summer length internship, yet it's still a way to connect with students. It's still a way to uh, kind of test out students and build that, that pipeline. Um, you know, we know COVID has, has uh, hammered some industries and some types of organizations and other organizations are, are thriving through COVID. So I think sometimes it, it, it goes back to, you know, looking outside the box, being creative, being what types of positions am I interested in, but maybe looking at that type of position, maybe in a different industry. So for example, marketing, you know, marketing can be pretty competitive. And if a student's interested in a, a major marketing firm or PR firm, maybe they're not getting the types of opportunities they're looking for, or it's been tough to get in. Well, maybe look at a, an online education platform. Online education platforms are, are just exploding in growth and popularity. And so maybe there's more of a need for marketing in that sector. So, um, you know, a, a, lot, a lot happening and there's still a lot of unknowns um, as we move forward. All right, well, thank you, Lisa and Don. This has been a very informative presentation and I'm grateful for the time that you've spent with us and our families this evening. Families, if you have additional questions or you have um, some questions about how to advise your students through what's next, you can also send us an email at families at wm.edu and I'm happy to have a conversation with you about how maybe you can best support your student through an internship or career search. And also be sure to be reading your parent and family newsletters that are sent each month because the Cohen Career Center consistently adds their events, programs, and resources into that newsletter for you all to access. And so thank you again for being with us this evening, families. This was recorded and we will share with you later. I hope everyone has a great evening.